In 2000, at the age of 22, Robert Jean Will was arrested for the shooting of a police officer in Harris County, Texas. He has always maintained that despite being present that night, he did not shoot Deputy Hill. In fact, according to police radio logs, he was handcuffed and in police custody at the time of the murder. There is no DNA evidence and no gunshot residue to tie Robert to the crime. Robert himself was shot in the hand at the same time the officer was killed. He was sent to death row in 2002 after only a two and a half week trial with less than adequate defence counsel. The investigation was compromised from the beginning as the actual perpetrator is related to a high ranking police officer in Harris County. Since Robert's conviction, five different witnesses have given sworn affidavits that this other individual has confessed repeatedly to murdering Deputy Hill. The trial process was also marked by several startling flaws. Robert was tried by Chuck Rosenthal, the Chief DA of Harris County, the highest ranking prosecutor in Houston, whilst he was defended by court-appointed public defence attorneys. Overworked, public defenders are unable to provide the kind of effective defence required for a capital murder trial. During the trial, which closely followed the events of September the 11th, 2001, Prosecutor Rosenthal said that the events of 9-11 prove that there is evil in this world and that that evil is embodied in Robert Will. A statement like that is emotionally manipulative used to prey on feelings of insecurity and fear at that sensitive time. Comparing Robert to suicide bombers is both ridiculous and offensive to many people. Because the victim was a sheriff's deputy, the police officers' union had many uniformed officers pack the courtroom wearing ribbons to show their support for their fallen comrade and seated right by the jury box. This is a tactic known to successfully sway juries. Further to this, there were two members of the jury with very close connections to Houston police officers, creating a juror bias against Robert from the onset. At the crucial appeal stage of Robert's case, his state counsel filed identical appeals for Robert Will and the railroad serial killer, Agil Maturino Resendiz. Neither appeal mentioned the defendants or their cases, and both included incorrect conviction dates. Stephen Bright, the president and senior counsel of the Southern Centre for Human Rights, referred to Rob's counsel as completely incompetent. This poor quality of lawyering, Bright stated before the US House of Representatives, is so common in these courts that they just deny the appeals based on briefs that would not receive a passing grade in a first year legal writing course. Rob's second federal habeas attorney failed to prevent the available evidence of Rob's innocence. As the federal judge made it very clear in the denied motion, Rob Will's case has errors of grave proportion in all its stages. Robert's case highlights the inadequacies and prejudices of the US justice system, and in particular, the injustice that the poorer members of the American society receive. We sympathize immensely with the family of the fallen officer. No one should lose a loved one in that way. However, Robert is not the man who killed Deputy Hill and the deputy's family deserves to know the truth. Robert is incarcerated on Texas death row, the most restrictive death row in the entire United States. A human being in isolation 23 hours a day in a cell that measures six by 10 foot, sleeping on a one inch thick mat laid upon a metal bunk. With almost no access to recreation, he has just one hour a day if the guards choose to allow it that particular day one hour in a larger indoor cage. He has no contact visits. Every visit is conducted through bulletproof glass using telephones, meaning the only physical contact Robert has had in 11 years is being handled by the prison guards. No phone calls are allowed for him to hear a loved one's voice. He is given two meals a day, which are often rotten, dirty and full of hair. Food is also regularly withheld in entirety in a clear violation of human rights. On top of this, his punishments for even very minor offences often include the confiscation of property, including hygiene products, books, art supplies and every item of clothing. Radios are made very expensive, regularly confiscated without good reason and many cells can receive no radio reception at all. This is one of the only death rows in the USA which doesn't have television. So often he can be left alone with no stimulation, naked, filthy and starving. These are the most restrictive prison conditions in the entire United States. They are designed to break people down, make life as miserable and lonely as possible while they wait to die. This man is a father, a kind and generous person. 
Conditions on death row can bring out the worst in people, but this is not the case for Robert. He is selflessly happy to help others on death row and people out here in the free world. He has many facets to his character despite the restrictions of his circumstance. A certified yoga instructor, but also an activist, he is the co-founder of the Drive Movement, a group of men and women campaigning for better conditions for inmates across the board from within the US prison system. These caring tendencies are deep-seated. Prior to his incarceration, Robert was studying child psychology at Houston Community College to enable him to better help those in need. Now, he is pursuing a university degree from Louisiana State. He is only the second person on death row to attempt a degree whilst incarcerated. Demonstrating that even though he is in prison for a crime he didn't commit, he is still using this time to better himself and improve the lives of other people. Robert is an artist, self-taught with a very limited access to art supplies. Coloured pencils and children's block paints are all he is allowed. Art is one of the few outlets available for someone in prison to express their emotions and feelings. There are examples of the variety of art, both spiritually and politically inspired, which he has created over the last 11 years on his Supporter On website. And there was a recent exhibition of his work in Hamburg, Germany, one of the many places his story has reached so far. As an intensely spiritual person, yoga and meditation are something that Rob uses to help centre and keep himself positive whilst he's under such dreadful conditions. Yoga has helped him to transcend his immediate confinement. Now, at the end of his appeal process, what Robert needs is exposure. People need to know what is happening and we need people to pressure the US government to do the right thing. Texas likes to carry out its dirty work in the dark and when we shine a light on it, we can make this government listen. We've seen clear evidence of that. In 2007, in the case of Kenneth Foster, whose death sentence was commuted because of pressure that activists, communities and the world put on Governor Perry. If enough people know about Robert's situation, they can demand action. Enough support and exposure and together we can make that happen. In early 2012, Robert has been granted a wonderful new attorney as he approaches the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals. And recently, the New York Times and other newspapers have run very positive articles regarding Robert's situation. With the work of his attorney and the support of people like you, Robert could finally get a chance to prove his innocence and ultimately save his life. Robert needs your help. Please visit his website at freerobwill.org to learn more about how you can be a part of the struggle for freedom. To help in our efforts to raise funds for his cause, check out our web shop. You can buy merchandise or make donations via our website. All contributions will be used exclusively for Rob's defence and for his campaign. We stand with Rob Will. Will you?